We're back here in the booth at Android Open. I'm Alex Howard, and I'm joined by a venture capitalist who has a little bit of experience with the Android world, uh, John Malloy, general partner at Blue Run Ventures. So, John, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. So, a lot of buzz outside here. We've got the booth set up so we don't hear it so much, but uh, there's definitely lots of creativity in this community. Uh, but as you know, a lot of Android apps are actually free. Uh, where's the business models that are emerging out of this world? Well, first off, I, I, don't, I look at, I look at uh, OS's at, from a neutral perspective. So I, okay. I, I like the business model of being able to get your apps to market and build a service. And I like to see companies that can actually operate across multiple OS's, meaning Android, iOS, whatever. Mm -hmm. get, how do you build a big audience? In terms of uh, how, do you, how do you do it, um, how do you build, build a business? Um, clearly, you know, adver advertising and paid downloads, in-app purchases are all the, you know, all the different options that people are talking about today. Okay. Um, Android itself is a little bit more centered around free apps. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that that's more a function of where we are in the market at the time. I think it's just because it's earlier days for Android relative to the other OS, I think that's why you see more freed apps. So primarily. as you're looking at this right now, in terms of um, where we are in the market, so to speak, uh, you compare it to, uh, say, the iOS marketplace, which has been around uh, since iTunes popped up years ago. Mm -hmm. um, where is it in terms of maturation? What are the kind of characteristics of the drivers that are, are really um, pushing things to happen? Yeah, I think if you if you if you did it on a timeline, I think you're probably looking at about two years behind where where it, it's gaining. Mm -hmm. It's probably two years behind iOS of today. Okay. Hazard a guess. And what does that mean in terms of the maturation of the market? In terms, well, of, in I terms think of the kinds of applications that people are building and uh, what people are using. Uh, well, I think that we're get. Well, I hope we're getting to the point where we're, we're talking about cross-platform apps. Uh, and so I think what has to happen here though is I think that we do need to, Im we do need to improve better conversions. Mm -hmm. We need to take more experiments uh, for to drive paid apps and conversions. So f one of the big advantages that, that I Android has over iOS is that it is relatively open. Mm -hmm. Speed to market matters. It's a more web-like experience. That means that I think you can experiment more with different pricing models. You can actually try different versions of your app. Whereas in iOS, it's just slower. I mean, just to get a bug fix sometimes takes you three, four weeks. You can push a market, you can push your product to market faster on Android. And I think that that's going to resonate with developers over time. It's more like a, a it's more web-like. It's not web-like enough, but it's more web-like. And, and I think that that kind of tweaking, it, variant testing, pricing testing, I think that's what's going to take to really mature the market and actually push it in a dip maybe beyond iOS. And as you, and, and as you look ahead towards next year, do you think that uh, the Windows ecosystem is going to start to become a much bigger part of this conversation? Uh, I know that Nokia has made a, a partnership with Microsoft, and, and uh, certainly people I talk to in the development world are thinking about that going forward. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and, and, and my perspective is I'm a venture capitalist, emphasis on capitalists, mm -hmm. um, and we need optionality. If you have a stagnant uh, system where the OS, can, OS provider can control um, what comes into the market and take a tax on what comes into the market, that's called the PC industry. We're talking about the post-PC industry. So I think to have multiple OSs, to have three OSs, ideally four, mm -hmm. if I count HTML5, to, for me, as somebody who funds early stage mobile companies, that's absolutely the direction that we want to see with the market. It yeah. keeps pressure, mm -hmm. competition keeps pressure on all OS providers. And that's usually a good thing for consumers, right? Good, great thing for consumers and a great thing for developers, right? Because in a way, if you think about it, I see it as today, you know, because of their marketing, iOS is ahead. Um, they, you know, they're, they're on TV a lot, but they're, what they're doing is they're doing a favor for everybody. They're pushing awareness. Mm. When you look at a football game and you see a beer ad, that shows an app with somebody pouring beer, mm -hmm. and the next commercial on a football game is a car commercial, and somebody's advertising an app. And we have an app that helps us helps you unlock your car when you leave your keys. Mm -hmm. That's actually good for everybody. That awareness is great, and so the image side of it has really, I think, been pushed by iOS. But that that awareness by end users is absolutely beneficial to the total market, including Android. 
so last question. Yeah. I, um, I hang out in Washington a fair bit, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's where I'm kind of coming out of, and there's uh, no shortage of discussion right now around job creation, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, around the sort of rules that surround uh, businesses, specifically small businesses and startups, because people, I, I think, naturally think that that's where a lot of the growth in the economy is going to come from. And when you look at this particular uh, intersection, this uh, around uh, early stage mobile companies, and mobile is clearly one of the, the dominant trends of the next decade, right? What are the barriers that are hindering some of that investment and, and kind of the um, efficient disbursement of capital that people in Congress, the regulators, anyone else who's actually in government could affect? Or is that completely out of their hands? Hmm, that's a really deep question. Uh, I yeah. had to ask you at least one before I got out of here. <laughs> I, I don't know that I can solve Washington's problems. Um, I, you know, I think that in terms of j wealth creation, job creation, there's mm -hmm. no greater opportunity for the next five to 10 years than mobile software. There's a huge, huge uh, opportunity that needs to be filled, and that's going to be filled by developers. The great thing about um, where we are in sort of the cycle of mobile mm -hmm. is the United States is actually at that epicenter. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the past, you know, mobile is very horizontal. The, at the Center for Innovation tends to move globally. Mm -hmm. And if you think about first generation, it's cellular, it started here. Second generation, the Center for Innovation was really Europe. Mm -hmm. And then when we started to see service innovation, it really first happened in Japan. Mm -hmm. And then we had form factor innovation, which happened in Korea. And it wasn't really until 2007 with the advent of the smartphone and you sort of you know, have the opportunity of smartphone fused with uh, internet savvy uh, consumer base, that really we're, at the, we're the leading edge of, we're defining what the future for mobile is going to be for the rest of the world. They're actually copying us, for, which is for the first time in, in 20 years in mobile. That's very exciting. I don't want government involved with that. So. I, I think that that's really about the people that are at this show and mm -hmm. other shows like it. And I think the challenge is, can we build businesses of scale? You know, it's great to have an app company, but how do you take that and how do you turn that into a sustainable long-term business? And I believe that it needs to be multi, you need to have a multi-OS strategy, a multi-platform strategy. You need to look at it as an acquisition strategy, but you have to always think about how do I actually drive that to become a service that's sustainable and makes a difference. Five years from now, there are definitely mobile companies that will be multi-billion dollar companies that are, you know, that are you know, going to be rolling off the tips of her tongue. We don't know their names today. Mm -hmm. I think I know a couple, but I won't pander mm -hmm. my own portfolio. Right. But just as the, as the web age created Google, created it, you know, Yahoo, what have you, we're at the beginnings of that a period of time where those kinds of significant scale players are going to emerge from this this really interesting soup that we have. Cool. Well, I'll be keeping a close look at it. I'm right. sure you will as well. Put right. some chips down. Absolutely. And uh, thanks again for joining us here. Nice to see you. All right.